Klingons. Easily one of the most recognizable aspects of Star Trek, the warrior race has been depicted in every single iteration of the television series to date. And while their physical appearance and behavior has changed over the years, no alteration was as drastic as the one we now see in Star Trek Discovery. But this video isn't complaining about how much I don't like change. I'm here to talk about why the Klingons feel different, and how Discovery has not only reinvented their looks, but seemingly the entire race from the ground up. This is Ketwalski. Okay, so let's break this down into three parts. The Klingons look, their voices, and their mythology. Let's start with their looks, since everyone is pretty familiar with that topic. Originally, it was stated that the Klingons shown in Discovery's pilot were living on an ancient sarcophagus ship and adhering to an ancient Klingon code set down by Kaelas. This was initially an effort to calm fans' nervousness about the beloved Trek race and explain the visual inconsistencies. However, that narrative was quickly pushed aside for the more bold stance. The entire Klingon race has been almost completely redesigned. And needless to say, not so many fans appreciated this news. And whether you like or dislike the new look is a discussion for another day. The point here is the physical redesign of the Klingons and their accompanying props and costumes is the foundation for why they feel so different to longtime Trek fans. Aside from the original series, Klingons have maintained a fairly similar appearance from show to show. Dark black and gray costumes, large black or brown wigs, and what is clearly some minor facial prosthetics to cover the human actors underneath. Additionally, the sets and props used by Klingons were pretty much all the same visually. Darkened, smoky lit rooms with some red lighting, and hard edges. The same style of batleth and daggers. Heck, even their starships have similar looking bridge layouts. If the Discovery producers reused this visual style, it would have no doubt enhanced Trekkie's abilities to associate this new show to Trek's past. However, they chose a different path. They chose to reinvent the Klingons almost as an entirely new race of aliens. First, the armor and outfits worn by Klingons seen in Discovery differ wildly, from complex and intricate designs to leather and hide clothing. Almost every Klingon depicted on screen has a personal variation to their costume. Additionally, the sets shown for Klingon starships are now a true work of beauty. Gone are the dimly lit red rooms with uncomfortably flat chairs. Instead, we are treated to complex architecture that adds a yet unseen layer to Klingon culture. Instead of ensuring everything functioned just good enough for a warrior, the culture at some point really cared about the physical look of the ships, homes, and armor that they wore. It definitely fits with the theme of them being an ancient warrior race. It's even also comparable to how armor and buildings looked during Earth's medieval eras. Next up, we have skin color and prosthetics. Instead of the Klingons being played by actors and actresses with simple headpieces, fake teeth, wig, and nose prosthetic, Discovery went full throttle with their makeup. Full head and neck coverage, doubling the nostrils, increasing the lip size, contact lenses, changing the skin color for different tribes, and of course, dropping hair altogether for a full head of forehead ridges. So if you compare the intent behind the original Klingon design and the reimagined one seen in Discovery, I think you can understand that there is a disparity between what each production team set out to do. OG Klingons were about creating a visually distinct race that was easily recognizable to fans, simple for an actor to pick up as a guest star, and have the flexibility to be placed inside of any Trek production without too much fuss. Discovery Klingons, on the other hand, were intended to kick things up a notch and create a fully realized and immersive alien culture to depict on screen. This more detailed and thorough approach was a great idea in theory, however, it didn't resonate with Trek's core audience and thus failed in execution for the show. But the look wasn't the only thing changed. The way the Klingon sound changed as well. The actors playing OG Klingons typically put on a stylized voice 
that was intended to sound angry, brooding, or conniving to some varying degree. Sometimes the voice didn't really work so good, sometimes the actors didn't bother to use the special voice at all. I offer a toast. The Undiscovered Country. Again, this supports the goal of the OG Klingon production team. It wasn't really about creating a fully immersive alien species, it was about making something appear passable to get into the great dialogue and plot of the story being told. The alien aspects of the Klingons were always subdued unless it was part of the overall plot. So how did Discovery's actors and actresses approach this? Well, I believe with the physically reimagined look and costumes, the cast was told to also up their game when speaking on screen. To that end, almost every main Klingon has a character-specific accent. Additionally, the cast speaks much more Klingon during dialogue sequences than ever before. Again, whether you like the accents or not is a separate issue, but it's important to note that there is a deliberate attempt on the production staff to expand on how the Klingons' vocals come across to the audience, attempting to create a more rich experience and culture. Speaking of culture, I now want to talk about Klingon mythology. So if you're new to Star Trek, let me explain a few things to you really quickly. Klingons are known as a deeply spiritual and ritualistic warrior race. After spending their early years as a species killing each other, a Klingon named K. Les rose to unite all the divided houses on their home planet of Kronos and almost single-handedly created the Klingon Empire. After over a thousand years, K. Les's story has become the cornerstone of Klingon mythology and religious beliefs. So why does any of that matter? Well, in OG Klingon culture, K. Les was a revered warrior and served as the golden standard for Klingon behavior. While Kaelas' role as a messiah is heavily played up in OG Klingon storylines, including a resurrection story similar to that of Jesus, it doesn't compare to his impact on that of the Discovery Klingons. The entire premise behind the opening of Discovery Season 1 is the Klingon religious leader Takuvma activating a starship known as the Beacon of Kaelas, which is essentially an interstellar notification system for all the Klingon houses to show up in a specific area. Takuvma and his religious followers mold Kaelas' message into a call for unity against the Federation. Kaelas' teachings are almost being manipulated in some way. I believe the producer's original intent here was to show off what radicalized Klingon zealots would be like. However, it didn't pan out like that in the story, and instead we got a mishmash of ideas and shaved Klingon heads. So now that all of that is understood, I now want to talk about why this Klingon redesign ultimately failed to reach its core audience and make the Klingons feel so different. I mean, this isn't the first redesign for them within Trek, so it should have been okay, right? Well, no. And that's for several reasons. One, the official reason for the Klingons being bald and looking different changed several times, with the current answer being that it's Klingon tradition to shave off all their body hair in a time of war. I heard post-war the Klingons are growing their hair again. Your herbs are true. Which not only doesn't fit in with the rest of Star Trek, but it doesn't even fit into Season 1 of Discovery because everyone was already bald before the war was declared. Number two, fans were already upset by the studio producing another prequel series, but the fact that everything Federation and Klingon looks so aesthetically different from the original series really dug the knife in deeper. And finally at number three, the prosthetics didn't really work so good. Yes, for the most part they looked decent, but you could clearly see some areas beginning to separate between the actor and the makeup. Not to mention that it made it almost impossible to understand what the actors were saying at times. This was especially bad in the season premiere, which unfortunately was the first impression that left a bad taste in people's mouths. <laughs> My final thoughts are this. Discovery did more than just change the look of the Klingons. I believe the reason why they still feel odd to longtime fans extends beyond the physical and is instead something deeper. We as Trekkies know a lot about Klingons and their culture and how they operate. So reimagining essentially their entire culture was going to have a jarring effect on our ability to connect with what is on screen. 
Will we get used to these new Klingons? Maybe. But I know for me, it's gonna take more than just adding a little bit of hair to win me over. Mm.